Having gone to art school and graduated, I'm gonna tell you all the things they don't teach you in art school and where you can learn them yourself. Hi, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Victoria and I'm a designer. I graduated with a degree in graphic design and a minor in IT. Having gone through all the classes, done all the assignments, looked over all the syllabi, talked to all the professors, and have briefly experienced post-grad, I can tell you that there's a lot of things they don't teach you while you're in school. For whatever reason, even though you might be paying thousands of dollars for this education, there are a lot of things that you don't get taught. Even though I had to learn all these things on my own, and you probably will too, I want to share where I learned these things with you so that you can have a jumping off point to go ahead and dive right into some of these topics and subjects. Don't be intimidated because you won't have to start from square one. I am going to be sharing all my resources and where I learned these things down below. The first thing I didn't learn while I was at school was to how to use any of the design or art related programs. Anything program or software related, I had to teach myself. I'm not sure if this is the case for every school, but it definitely was the case for the school I attended. Nobody was ever taught how to use the Adobe Suite. Having taught myself all these software and programs, I have to tell you that the best place to learn them is going to be YouTube, hands down. YouTube is an abundant place of resources and videos and how to's of how to actually work within pretty much any Adobe program from the basics, from square one. I can say with confidence that everything I learned at my foundation of all the programs I've learned came from YouTube videos. And I started learning these programs six years ago. Nowadays, there's a lot better content and stuff out there just on YouTube that you can learn from. A couple years into learning, I did go ahead and start a playlist of all the things and videos that I was watching and learning from. So you can go ahead and click on that playlist as well. It doesn't include everything I've ever watched and all the tutorials and videos I've learned from. And there are definitely a newer, better videos out there in some cases nowadays, but it's a good jumping off point if you want to look at some of those tutorials out there. Another place where I've learned a ton is Skillshare classes. No, this is not sponsored. I genuinely use the product. Some of my favorite Adobe Suite related classes are taught by Daniel Scott, Jordi Vanderput, and Jake Barlett. Aaron Draplin also has some great tutorials out there related to graphic design as well. That's all strictly design related, but in the terms of motion design, I've learned the majority of what I know from Ben Marriott and Animotion on YouTube. I have recently enrolled in Ben Marriott's class and it is also phenomenal if you are looking to get into motion design and learning After Effects. It is advanced, but I love the course. While you're at school, something they should definitely teach you, but don't, is the basics of finding a job. So I personally was taught this at my school, but a lot of other creatives and designers at other schools that I've talked to are not taught any of this information as to any kind of career basic knowledge that you need to have. I'm talking the basics of finding a job, like how to write a resume, a cover letter, why you need a good website, why having a website is more important than having a physical copy of your portfolio nowadays, where the job sites are, what are the good job sites, and things like networking that are super essential in finding a good workplace. Not even just a good workplace, just a workplace that's related to your field. It's tough out there, guys. It's really tough. <laughs> I don't mean to scare you. <laughs> if you're currently going to a university or have gone in the past, I would suggest starting out at your career center as your university likely has one. Your career center is going to help you with all those basic things like your resume, your cover letter, and helping you kind of get a decent enough website that people can click on. They might even have services like interview practices that you can go in and practice interviews with them as if you're doing a real life interview with an actual potential employer. If not None of that's not an option or you don't actually go to a university, I would say LinkedIn is a pretty decent starting point in terms of free resources. You can also use LinkedIn as a place to connect with others in your field and you can learn more about the field by asking them questions, DMing them and saying, hey, I'm really interested or could you potentially look over my resume? I'm really looking to get started within the field, stuff like that. I would be really kind and genuine and just let them know where you're starting out, potentially asking them any professional questions that you might have, asking them to review your resume, or asking if they might be willing to do a practice interview with you. They're gonna have a ton of tips and I would really suggest utilizing that free resource. Of course, if you don't know anything at all about finding a job or the basics of it, 
Google is going to be your best friend here. Simply doing a bunch of Googling is really going to catch you up to speed on all the basics of what you need to know. At the end of the day, you're essentially starting a career. And because of that, I would really recommend reading Your Career in Animation by David P. Webby, although not strictly design related. I find this to be a great resource about your career overall, how to navigate starting and building a career, and also building genuine relationships along the way while you're doing it. There can be a lot to navigate and weigh in your head and I find that just to be a really awesome book for like how to have a good career that you actually love. Something else they don't teach you while you're in art school is the actual business logistics of going freelance. This is all the finer print stuff of starting an LLC, where to pay your taxes, how much your taxes should be, why you should get a CPA, bookkeeping, all of those finer print things that nobody ever teaches you while you're in art school. Anything that is going to prevent you from getting in trouble with the law or the IRS, they're probably not going to teach you while you're at school. And that sucks. Basically, how to legally run a business and do freelance work. When I was getting started, I learned the most probably from my entrepreneurship club, from mentors, my small business development center, and just other small business owners in my community. I think where I learned the most about business and the law and how to actually do small business right was the Small Business for Dummies book. Don't laugh. I know it says for dummies, but honestly, that book is intensive and has a ton, a ton of resources in there about actually what it's like to start a business and how to legally run it and all the actual terms terms of all the things. They're going to teach you about what an LLC actually is, how to start one, why you should start one, the basics of contracts, all the things. It's chock full of information. That is sincerely the best starting point that I would recommend to anyone. Another book that I love that is chock full of information and all sorts of business logistics is the Graphics Artists Guild Handbook, which is specifically for designers and creatives. This is a massive resource as it has a bunch of stuff in there explaining copyright, contracts, and even has templates to a bunch of legal documents that you would most likely be using within your design business. They even have several sections in that book relating to a bunch of common issues freelancers and creative businesses face and how to address those. These books are expensive, but you can get one used or a last edition for a much cheaper price. So while you're at school, Everybody, all the teachers and professors are going to be telling you about how great social media is and why you should use it and get yourself out there and put your name out pretty much everywhere. It's a great way to market yourself and set yourself apart. Everyone's gonna tell you that you should use it, be putting yourself out there on it and taking the most advantage of it. Thing is, no one tells you how. And that's kind of the important part. Yes, it is really important to have yourself out there within a digital space and having a digital profile and footprint nowadays. See this channel as case in point, but no one tells you how to properly use it to your own advantage. I'm currently developing a social media for a creative series so if that's out I would go ahead and click here and that's a free resource that you can use but if it's not out there or you want some alternative methods I would recommend using Skillshare for this one on Skillshare the classes I got the most out of regarding social media were Kat's social media marketing course and Andy J Pita's social media journey course the next thing they don't teach you while you're in university is how to properly present things Yes, there are going to be some people who already have a more natural aptitude for presenting than others, but I think it's still a really important skill that everyone needs to know. And I'm not strictly talking about going up and doing a PowerPoint presentation in front of everyone and their moms for a 20 minute presentation. It's about presenting ideas, walking people through your creative process, pitching to potential clients, going through case studies, reviewing final deliverables, or just straight up running an effective meeting. The best way I've learned how to do this is straight up just watching a bunch of TED Talk videos on YouTube. Honestly, there are a ton of good ones out there that 
all they do is present and you can kind of take notes on what actually works and why it works and there are a decent amount of TED talk videos out there about what makes a good presentation as well or what makes a good TED talk and I would suggest watching those for case studies I would really recommend going and searching them on YouTube or going and watch at previous Adobe live videos those are great especially for creatives the last thing I do to learn this skill is to simply practice nobody's going to like hearing that but just practicing is the best way to learn this skill and you don't have to practice in front of other people I'm practicing right now by making this YouTube video and all that's in front of me is a camera you can practice by like I said making a YouTube video just practicing in front of your mirror or typing out a script and just practicing reading those things aloud. If you have access or the opportunity to present things in a small manner within meetings, just saying, hey, let's bring up this date or you have the specific duty to present this small thing, start practicing in small ways there as well. The best way for this is honestly just to do dry runs and do it over and over again. When you're able to present well, a ton of doors in life are opened to you. So I highly suggest learning how to speak and present an effective clear manner the next thing that they don't teach you while you're at university is file management nobody ever tells you how to manage your files nobody ever says how to back them up or even suggests a good way to back them up nobody tells you how to organize your folders so not everything's just labeled final or weird names and you can't ever find anything when you really get into design and creating, you're going to realize that there are a ton of files and a ton of assets for everything. Honestly, the way I learned this was simply through trial and error. I'm currently making a video on that as well. So if that's out, you can go ahead and click somewhere up here. But if you haven't, I would just suggest Googling. In terms of backing up your files, I would suggest using Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive. Those are all great options. They are probably going to cost you, but they are phenomenal. And I would suggest syncing up your computer with the cloud and then backing up all your information as it literally is made. Then for whatever reason, if your computer crashes, you don't really lose anything except what you might've currently been working on at that exact second. All your stuff is good to go. And that's really important. The last thing that they don't teach you in art school is how to manage your creativity in a soul crushing world. Okay, so maybe that's a dramatic way to put it, but it's true. And honestly, as I'm making this video in 2022, in the middle of the recession, an ongoing climate crisis, the after effects of a global pandemic, and just an overall topsy-turvy world, I would kind of argue that maybe it's not that dramatic. And that's not even accounting for any personal stuff you may be dealing with from family, mental health, finances, job related stuff. Amidst all this, it can be hard to be creative at times. It can be hard to go through creative roadblocks or deal with things like burnout or imposter syndrome or just feeling like the poop emoji overall. I don't know. Sometimes life is hard. Creatively speaking, the best place that I've found to address and deal with some of these issues is the Creative Pep Talk by Andy J. Pizza. This is a podcast, and honestly, I can't say I've listened to any other podcast like it. It's my favorite podcast. I listen to it every week, and it is simply phenomenal. This podcast also has over 300 recordings at this time, so basically any kind of creative issue that you can think of, probably someone has had those feelings or similar feelings in before and has done a podcast about it. So you can go and listen to that backlog and kind of see where your issues are and where you might need a creative pep talk. Out in the world of podcasts, there are a ton out there about creativity and creative careers that I would suggest just feeling out and looking at in the world. But there are really none other like this, especially for like the heart and soul of creativity, like creative pep talk. If you find anything like it, please drop it in the comments down below. I would love to hear your creative podcast recommendations because I'm always down to listen to another creative related podcast. To help give you a boost, the next thing I would recommend is checking out the Struthless YouTube channel. Although this channel isn't strictly creative based or design based at all, this is a good channel in learning how to deal with just a soul crushing world overall. And the creator is a creative himself. So it's kind of coming from a creative perspective. 
Plus his videos are often cool and have some sort of creative thing in them to get inspired by, so it's worth checking out regardless. Lena Norm's YouTube channel is also a fantastic place to give yourself a little pick-me-up and boost. Her videos are funny, insightful, and really also tap into the heart and soul of what it means to be a human and at times creative person. Those are all online and digital resources that you can access at any time. But the two most effective things that I found to help deal with this are one, finding a creative community, and two, taking care of yourself. Having friends to talk to, listen to, and empathize with that you can kind of talk through your journey in theirs really kind of helps bring a greater perspective to you and your creativity. It can also make you feel a lot less alone because you too might have experienced the same or similar feelings at the same time or just have someone who feels like they're in your corner that you can talk to about these things. If you have a creative community as well, that is fantastic for helping you get through things like creative burnout or dealing with imposter syndrome as well or other creative common mental ailments. Lastly, taking care of yourself is key to doing pretty much anything. If there is no you or you are in really rough shape, then the work you want to create isn't gonna happen. You can't make your best work if there is no you or you aren't doing well. You need to be sleeping, you need to be eating nutrients, you need to be drinking water, you need to be getting movement in your day, and you need to be taking care of your mental health and doing things you enjoy. I truly believe that our best creativity comes from our lived experiences, and if we aren't out living or we're not feeling well about the life we're living, then we're going to be pulling from an empty well. Of course, all of this is going to take time and it can be difficult to put into practice, but it is essential. The one thing about having not learned all these things at school is that you learn how to educate yourself. This is arguably one of the most invaluable skills that you can have is learning how to learn for yourself and how to educate yourself. This might be a really convoluted way of going about it, but if you grasp that's what you're trying to learn by doing these things, it does kind of work. Honestly, I still think they should teach you some of these things though but whatever some of these things are just going to be lifelong learning endeavors like learning how to best take care of yourself and evolving with a career and in industry that is going to move as time progresses and you learn to move within it some of the day's best practices might not be the same as tomorrow's the whole point is to just keep learning <music> I hope you were able to take something from this video or found something useful from the resources that I shared that is helpful to you in some way. Maybe in the future I can have some dedicated videos related to strictly these topics. Let me know if that's something you would like down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please give it a like down below as it really helps me out a lot and consider subscribing. Otherwise, keep on learning, stay safe, stay healthy, and and just do something that makes you happy. See you in the next one. Bye.